We have our Solaris tower, our solar panel, and the tools we're going to use. An electrical tape, a Phillips screwdriver, a small flathead screwdriver, a half inch socket, wire cutters, wire strippers, and a knife. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to take this off. We don't need that right now, we'll use that later. We're going to remove this. This is our solar panel, it comes with two screws for mounting. This is our Solaris tower. We have an anti-climbing cap, a radio board, cells, control board, battery, base, and side rails. Okay, first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our fish wire that is pre-installed So we can fish the wire for the solar panel through the frame of the unit. I'm going to take it out on that end. And on this end, it's wrapped around the top. I'm going to unwrap it. Make a small loop, just like that. Then we're going to take our solar panel wire, feed it through the loop, and tape it. Just like that. We're going to cut off the end, the excess of this wire. And then we will feed the loop and the wire into the hole on the side. And then we just pull our wire all the way through the frame. Alright, so once we've got all of our solar panel wire through, we'll go back to this end. We're going to mount our solar panel. You see this little groove right here for the wire? So you put the, tuck the wire in there. The solar panel goes on just like that. Push the wire out of the way. Tighten it down. Once the solar panel is mounted, you can remove one of these grommets. We're going to cut a little slit in it with the knife. Take our wire. I forgot to cut the end of it off. I'm going to feed it through this hole and then through the grommet. Put the grommet back in place, pull all the wire through the hole. Once you have all the wire through the hole, we're going to feed it up the body through this channel. It's easier if you just go a little bit at a time. If these clips come out, 
they're very easy to just pop back in place. So we're going to continue to feed the wire under the battery. We're going to feed it all the way up to the control board. Just like that. All right, now that we have the wire at the control board, we can cut off all of the excess, or if you want, you can just try to stuff it underneath. It's easier if you cut it though. We're gonna strip our wires, then we're gonna connect them to the terminal. White to green, yellow to yellow, red to red, black to blue. All right, now remember when you're stripping your wires to strip enough that the um, conductor is inside the terminal and that the conductor coating is not inside of there. Make sure that your terminals are nice and tight, that they're not gonna pull out and that you don't have excess metal sticking out where it can touch others. You tuck a little bit of the tail end of that wire underneath the board and you're good to go. All right. So you mount your floor socket, mount the shims to the floor socket using the included hardware. And if you can see on here, the shims have a slight taper. You want the taper side to the column. Leave the shims as loosely tightened as you can so that you can hold them out. Take your column. Align the shims with the frame and slide it down. Keep a, a small gap underneath so you don't pinch any wires. Take your half inch socket, and tighten the bolts. Okay, this is our TX tower. You need to make sure that both sides of your barrier are on the same channel. We're gonna plug in the battery. And then we're gonna put it into alignment mode. There's a select button, hold it down for three seconds. The three quick beeps mean alignment mode. The one beep means you're on bottom one, or cell one. You have to push both being, or both towers into alignment mode. So we gotta go over to the other side and put that one in alignment mode. All right, this is our RX column. It has a channel selection just like the other side. And it has a switch right here for mono detection on the bottom beam. Switch these down in order to have mono detection on the bottom beam up turns off the mono detection on the bottom beam so we're going to plug in this battery and then we're going to put this side into alignment mode all right when we're aligning these we have two tools for alignment. We have a visual alignment right here on the side. It's on both sides. It's got a 45 degree mirror in there so it shoots out the front and you get a visual alignment. And we also have an audible tone. So one beep means we're on cell number one. And the beep speeds up as you get closer to alignment. When you have solid tone, that's the best alignment you can get. If you can't get solid tone, get as close to it as you can. Then tighten the set screw. Then you're going to hit the button again. 
you'll hear it count and that means we're on cell number two all right so now we're on cell number two good alignment tighten the set screw now we'll do cell number three three beeps means cell number three after you're done aligning on the TX side there is a potentiometer for power what you want to do while still in alignment mode is you want to turn that potentiometer down to where you lose your solid tone and then just back it back up until you get that solid tone again and let it set. On the RX side the potentiometer is a delay it's not power. Do not adjust this one. If you adjust the delay up on this you'll be able to walk through the beam without causing an alarm. Alright, these are our anti-condensation caps. They install pretty simply. You want it to be just above the cell. Put it in the side rails. Click it in. We're going to set each one. One above every cell. You want to make sure it doesn't hang down and block the beam at all. So you want to be just slightly above the cell. And each one of these comes with 10 of them, so we can throw in extra ones. Don't block the screws where you remove the side rails. Put one here. Did I say 10 inches? Not 10 centimeters. Okay, so you click them in place, and then they just screw in. After you screw in all your caps, remove the four screws that hold on the side rails and remove it as one piece. Leave your side rail and caps off to the side until your system is completely finished and up and running. Otherwise you have to keep taking it on and off and it's a pain. Alright, next we're going to wire up our radio coordinator. We have our two wire RS-485 and two wires for power which comes from our Maxibus. You can see the instructions down here on how to wire it up. Make sure that when you mount that the antenna is facing up. Comes with this bracket, screws in the wall and this actually screws into the bracket. Alright this is our, our Maxibus 3 hub. We have our RS-485, plugs in right here, and our power plugs in right there. This is our new Maximus 3000, so our RS-485, or our power, goes over here, and our RS-485 goes right here. We have four ports for our RS-485 on this Maximus. Once you're finished and your entire system set up and up and running, you put your lens cover back on, slides up and in, and you put your set screw in, and then the bag that we cut off the battery has these clips. They go on the sides right here, and clip on to help keep the water out. Once you're finished with that, you get your anti condensation caps and you put them back on.